those two, two hogs got to the woods before they were eliminated. And in two years time, you know hogs, in two years time, there will be a hundred hogs back in that field. You can also trap and shoot all the hogs you want and you will never get them all. This method is used in Florida. It's a Florida gator. Dr. Barry Tillman said the problem is they haven't educated the gator yet. Uh, 10 foot fences, I get reports uh, of deer jumping nine and 10 foot fences. That is very costly. This peanut farmer, oh by the way, those peanuts are 55 days old and the peanut farmer had just purchased his shells and in between this field and next field, he was calling the game warden. My bet is he'll be tired of staying up half the night shooting deer pretty quick. We use deer repellents. But, uh, believe it or not, the repellents did work, but were uh, very expensive. So that brings bring us to the Charles Dean Deer and Hog Mega Fence. Uh, Charles Dean started this in 1984. By the way, you would really enjoy hearing Charles do this talk. I owe him a lot of gratitude for the plan, but he has a dual fence, one T-post with two strands of hot, then on the inside, one T-post with one strand of hot. 100 acres of cotton. He was about to abandon it, put this fence up, and it worked. Uh, we've changed the plan just a little bit. And believe me, every time I share with the farmer, he changes the plan a little bit too. I hope you all can read fast. By the way, his plan is very successful. The deer mega fence is a three strand high tensile fence for deer 18, 36, 54 inches above the ground. Then three feet out, a one strand 18 inches above the ground. For hogs, you need to go lower 10 to 12 inches and the second strand, 24. Hogs don't really jump much unless, you, unless they get pinned in. And then your outrigger fence, three feet out. Just regular fence post. A lot of farmers are using fiberglass rods for that outside. How it works, the deer hogs hit the first fence and get a very good shot. Usually they don't want to go through that second fence. Sometimes they'll run in between the two. It sort of deer disorients deer and hogs. It's almost like an optical illusion to them to have the two fences. We all know deer can jump a 54 inch fence, but something about the two strands, maybe it's just a little too complex for them. Uh, last year, uh, the Cotton Commission funded a test. We did it with Andy Thornburg, Mobile County, was uh, monitored by a game warden. 99% successful. This year we have 16 of these fences up, the Soybean Commission, Wheat and Feed Grain, and it, uh, as of yesterday, all 16 farmers were happy with their fences. This is, uh, most people are using the solar chargers. Uh, this is a 12 joule solar charger. We'll get to that in a minute. Solar panels, uh, marine battery. Andy Thornburg, uh, I don't know why he trusted me to do this experiment. I guess when you're desperate, you'll do about anything, but he has lost many acres of cotton, peanuts. One peanut field he has, he counted 239 deer in it. This is Kevin Hill who monitored our test. Again, another picture of it. This is the fence. 30 acres of cotton out here was eaten down to lip level. Cotton does not come back when it's mowed that close. Uh, planted the cotton, put the fence up, game board and monitored. Before the fence was up, 32 sets of eyes right here, deer. After the fence was charged, put it on, After the fence was on, 32 sets of eyes right there. During the entire growing season, no deer or hogs went through that. There were three deer that walked around Airport Boulevard and came into the field. By the way, if you have deer or hogs that do go through this, and you probably will, 
they do not want to go back out and you have an opportunity to relocate them. <laughs> this is James uh, Weber and Jason Weber in Atmore. This was feed, Wheat and Feed Grain Commission grant. That corn three years ago, they harvested zero, zero corn. Another picture, here's a solar panel, a charger, battery. You can see the ground system. Every wire is high. Here again, over the corner is a hog trap, shotgun. They're grinning, not because of that, but they've kept the deer out, hogs out, and that's a bumper crop of corn. This is a wheat field. This is John and David Bitto in uh, Baldwin County. I think it's a 150 acre field. Deer were eating, mowing to the ground, 30 acres of wheat. They put the fence up. You can see it's not too expensive. It does not have to be tight as a banjo. And that fence is working. The only problem is they had a herd of hogs already living in the wheat. And the day I took that picture, the, the night evening before, John had been in the business of relocating them. He had five that he relocated. The locking insulator that keeps the uh, wildlife from knocking the fence off, very important. This is uh, peanuts. Key strategies, your field border preparation, you don't want any ditches. Anywhere the hogs can go under. Very important. Timing. When you put that fence chart up, it needs to be hot. If you have the wires there, deer and hogs are creatures of habit. They'll go through it, find a pattern, and when you turn it on, they won't quit coming. Very important. Electric fence charts with a high joule output. If it says on there will do 20 miles, that means nothing has to have a high jewel kick jolt. That's why it's working. For 100 acres, I said earlier, 8 jewel, 12 jewel. The ground system, very important. For sake of time, I won't explain that. And if I did, it's going to be different in Florida anyway. Uh, wire selection, very important. We're using 12 and a half to 14 gauge. Main thing is so the wildlife don't break. It has to be a good conductor. Locking insulators. And whatever you do, don't give up. If it doesn't work, give me a call. One of the farmers who's doing the fence will help you. But a key strategy is be diligent. And then after a bit, it seems to be very easy. We're gonna do the cost. It's about $1,700 to do one mile for your fencing uh, wire and post. For the 12 joule charger, solar panel, battery, it's about 1,300. That 12 joule will do a 750 acre field. So to do 40 acres, you're looking at 3,000. That's uh, basically seven tons of peanuts, 10 bales of cotton. If you, I mean, most of you, if you did your survey, you're losing way more than that. You cannot afford to attempt to do something. Farmer told me he did 200 acres, it cost him 4,000. That's $20 an acre for that one year. In conclusion, this offense, offense is very effective. Uh, you need to be very diligent at first, but after that, it's a uh, low maintenance, relatively easy to build. Some of these farmers, after checking a while, it's become time and worry free. And last but not least, there's no total guarantee. Deer and hogs are unpredictable. They may not jump your fence, but they may jump mine. And uh, we do have a quite a few other strategies to add to what I've shared today. Again, I hope uh, appreciation to many people, but hope that helps in uh, your battle with the hogs. Thank you.